So who even plays this game anymore? Just by playing the game normally, one will encounter a couple dozen unpredictable bugs, glitches, a bunch of memory leaks, and a horrible frame rate. Anyone playing this game for long periods of time better be masochistic in some way. But one thing that is surprisingly predictable is the flaccidness of the connections between parts, which can be exploited to create moving mechanisms with no mods or DLC. Pioneered by the replica building community, this technology is known as Bendy Tech, and today I'm going to use it to build Mecha. Audio jungle. No, oh, damn it, I think broke. Fuck! We all know the stock bearing. This other inhumane practice has been around since ancient times. Stock bearings are all about imprisoning a round part in a cage of other parts, then separating them into different vessels so they can collide and move freely. But then the 1.7.3 update back in July of 2019 added the same vessel into action. But around this time I just stopped playing KSP because it's really buggy, really stressful, you know, I just, I'm just gonna make my own space game. But Anyways, same vessel interaction allowed the player to enable collisions between parts on the same vessel, which means separating into multiple vessels is no longer required for parts to collide. But to get parts to move on the same vessel without separating, one would have to use a long stack of parts instead, which will provide flexibility. Now, how do we start building a mecha and our... Uh, oh look, I already built one. Video over. Okay, jokes aside, all I'm going to focus on is walking legs. And over here we got walking legs. So this design is fairly standard bendy tech. The hip joints use a stack of spider engines for flexibility, some small decouplers and twitch engines as hinges, and an air brake for actuation with some micronodes to push against. The knees use little elevons for some reason. Controls are done with axes groups, so holding down a button will fully extend one leg and fully retract the other. And you may also notice that the air brakes bend backwards, and that's just because KSP. This was rapidly designed just to get all the engineering problems mapped out as fast as possible. And as you can see, it is really slow, and can only walk in low gravity. So as it seems, the only thing I need is a fast and strong bendy tech actuator to walk faster and support more weight. There also shouldn't be that much of a problem in getting it to walk. It just kind of worked without needing to understand it. And now I sought after designing a fast and strong bendy tech actuator and ended up building this thing. It's just a flashier air brake actuator and just nothing much. The, the real breakthrough was in using the big S elevons. They rotate at 40 degrees per second, the fastest for all stock control surfaces. They don't bend very far, but what if I used two of them instead? Like two elevons opposing each other so that both of their angles stack up. Or how about three, where one is sandwiched between the two? Well, now we got the Elevon Sandwich. Well, it seems I'm out of script now, and the sandwich is probably a bad design anyway, so let's just look at the recordings and see if I can say something meaningful. So we're starting off with the inside of the sandwich. These ant engines are being stacked to become the flexible hinge. And this is a test to see that the Elevon can move the bottom parts at all. So we're just adding more supports, we're using docking ports and micronodes to build a cage around the Elevons. I'm using docking ports and micronodes because they have some mass. They're not, they're not, like, ridiculously weightless. Someone from the r slash ksp discord named, uh, Shotch. They, they, they said that the heavier the better. Because when a part is heavier, they're a lot harder to move. So that, so that your stock mechanism can support more weight. And as you can see, the Elevon colliders at the top are actually flat. They may appear round, but they're not. 
So the first first couple of tests tests don't work, of course. Because I, I realized here that I need two hinges. If you look closely, there are three main parts. One is the upper elevon. Or like the, the elevon in the middle that's connected to the cockpit right now. And one is the cage that presses the two elevons together. And the other just connects to the bottom two elevons and to the rest of the leg. And uh, this test works a little better, one hinge is messed up. And after some iteration, this one is just straight up working. It looks weird because it's hard to tell which parts are connected to which. So this, this one has a steel beam on the cage. The, the steel beam is always pointing around half the total angle of the legs because it's the angle of just a single elevon. And here's something fun. You can stick a lot of these together, make like a scorpion Kraken tentacle, or a machine that demonstrates suffering. The construction isn't that sturdy yet, and as you can see it glitches out a lot. And now I'm actually making legs, and this is where I start to mess up a lot. As you can see, it's not working at all. And in some of these clips it kind of looks like it is working, but it's not. So I presume the problem is that the, the thighs are moving too fast compared to the knees. Because if you look at the old design, it uses quicker elevons for the knees. And it uses air brakes for the thighs. So I thought that replacing the top, that uh, so replacing the thighs with an air brake would fix the problem. 
So there was a so there was a useless tangent of making an air brake hinge instead. These Elevon actuators, they bend one way, but not the other. And here I started to realize what the problem was. Right now the motions look almost correct. It's just really, really, really close right now. And here's the breakthrough. It's all in the location of the hinges. The, the hinge has to be located a little more forward, and that just makes it work. And now I went back to the double sandwich design, and we're back on track, pretty much. These look like they're working properly, but they're not. And here we got the first perfect test. And this one, there's no gravity hacks. It is able to carry its own weight. And 
since we don't have a quill mech body yet, I just stuck this thing onto the bottom of a Suwabi SU-27. And this one is the funny mecha. That's all I'm going to do for this video. So the computer that I recorded, the computer that I recorded most of the footage on is broken now. And yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching.